Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic for a crossword special today. Now, John Henderson got in touch with us and suggested that we have a look at a puzzle coming out today, which is from the Financial Times, um, and it's by Io. I think Io is one of the pseudonyms of John Henderson himself. Um, so a little bit of background, actually. This might amuse. When I was about 18 and really getting into cryptic crosswords for the first time, I created a couple of my own and I sent them off to the person I thought was the best compiler in the world, who was the Guardian's main cryptic crossword compiler, Errol Carrier. Um, John Graham, I think it was called. And uh, Errol Carrier was polite enough to despite the fact that he almost certainly got a lot of ridiculous correspondence like this. He wrote back to me, he'd tried the puzzles, he pointed out that it looked like I was quite interested in creating grids and much less interested in clue writing, which was painfully accurate. Um, but he also gave me the address of another teenager who was into crosswords, John Henderson. Um, and John Henderson absolutely eclipsed me. I had not realised he was a teenager. He'd just been published in The Guardian for the first time as Enigmatist. And um, frankly, I think I felt completely overawed and out of my league. And uh, I'm not sure if I even did write to him. I, I mean, I should have. I had a lot to learn. Um, and then must have been 20 years roughly later when I was at the Times Crossword Championship. I met John Henderson for what I suppose must have been the first time. Um, and he said he remembered the name. I mean, I was doing quite well at, at solving by this point. But he also said, well, you must try writing crosswords. He then published on his website at the time, enigmatist.com, crosswords that I created every week for probably a year, it feels like, during which time... <laughs> I finally got the lessons in clue writing and, and the experience and got a lot better at creating crosswords. So John has been a friend since then and uh, is an absolute doyen of cryptic crosswords and somebody I've literally always been in awe of. So um, let's hope that IO isn't a pseudonym of someone else um, and I've gone through all that rigmarole for nothing, but there's a bit of background. Now, let's, um, what I'm going to do is call up the puzzle and then try and reshape my screen so things are in the right place. didn't really want to call it up because I want you to see it as I see it. Um, okay, so where, where, where am I going to put things? Let's make that all a bit smaller. Ooh, there's an old Sudoku behind that. We don't want to see that. Let's... Uh, Let's, well, not an old one, one I haven't actually done yet. I'm going to remove that. Okay, so this is the puzzle. Where am I going to put my head? Hmm. I know. No, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Let's stick me down in the bottom corner there. And uh, I'll, tr I'll fail to remember to move myself when we get to the last few down clues. Okay, so here's the puzzle. <clears throat> and uh, it's just today's cryptic in the Financial Times, number 17,385. Let's have a look and see if we can work out why John suggested we have a go and uh, what happens. So, eight across, first across clue. Land private hospital 20 pounds after repositioning taps. £20 is not one of those that has a, an animal name, like monkey or pony, which are 25 and £500. £20 can be a score. Hospital can be H. Repositioning taps suggests an anagram of taps. But I don't really know. A land suggests we might be looking for a country. East something or... No, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's look at one down. Swimming pool, cycling, some dancings included. Hmm, cycling is often used to rotate the letters of a word around, a bit like a dial on a, on a, 
padlock or something. Some dancings included. No, okay, let's have a look at this really long. 16117 across two answers. From Cleek's Masquerade Balls, I abstracted an expression of genius. Okay, I think... It, I'm thinking that balls could be an adjective to uh, mean nonsensical rubbish, i.e. an anagram indicator. Cleek's masquerade looks too long, even with the letter I abstracted from it. So how many letters are in Cleek's masquerade? 17, I think. And the length we need is 7, 8, 9, 16. OK, so it is going to be an anagram of Cleek's masquerade without the I. And it's going to be an expression of genius. But there are two Qs in that. And no I. So it's not IQ in the one one part. I don't know what that is saying. Oh, crikey, this is going to be tough. Right, four down. This Nothing so wordy. I forged place among records. So, again, forged looks like an anagram indicator. So wordy I. Well, that's okay. Nothing so wordy I is 15 letters, which is the right length. So it probably is an anagram of nothing so wordy I. Place among records. That could be verbal or nounal. In. There's no E's in this again. Don't, I don't think I'm going to need much help with that anagram, but some. Okay, I'm going to move on to other clues. Oh, look, they're all going to be C16. Good grief. Okay, let's have a look at 16. What's 16? 16, oh. Well, 16 is a three-letter answer. 3367. Oh, I suppose it continues at 16, 14, 6, 7. Although the clue doesn't stay that, I think we can assume that. So, this is basic, unless you count the biology of Eruca vesicaria. Eruca vesicaria, is that nettle or something? This is basic, unless you count the biology. Wow, I'm really not getting much done here. Let's have a look at 15 across, across the middle. Restricted by diet, one barely feeds a little shop girl. Nell from the old curiosity shop. One barely feeds a little shop girl. Now, I'm really getting stuck here. Let's uh, just move on to ordinary clues. Nine across. I felt that you changed, but only a little. What a brilliant... Uh, surface that is. I felt that you changed, but only a little. Something in my brain wants that to be iota. But I don't know why. No. Ten across. Kenya's capital is, I think, fashionable city on Lake Victoria. Well, Kenya's capital is uh, Nairobi. That's irrelevant, probably. Kenya's capital letter is K. I think, in my opinion, is Kisimo, it rings a bell, is that a city on Lake Victoria? It would be a very long definition, but probably appropriate for something as obscure as a city on one of the, in one of the countries surrounding Lake Victoria, like Tanzania. Oh, and that's the swimming pool. Didn't get any far. I don't know. Kisimo is a very uncertain answer. Oh, let's just move on. More than enthusiastic. Spanking here. Man's climax delayed. Let's not dwell on the surface of that. Um, more than enthusiastic. Looks like... 
the definition. Spanking could be a an anagram indicator here and man's, but what's climax delayed? That's the last, no, the first letter going backwards? I don't know. 12 across, let's try this. Wanting something hot, coven work, final touch to spell around blank. Cauldron would fit. Yeah, I think... Right, that is cauldron. Good. Well, thanks, Io, for providing a clue that actually points in its surface towards the answer. So a coven is a group of witches who would work around a cauldron with their spells, and the cauldron would be hot. However, what we get from the wordplay is coven minus oven because it's wanting or lacking something hot. That gives us a C. And then we're work, worked, we have to have worked, the final touch to spell, which is the letter L at the end of spell, and the word around. And that gives us an anagram of aldrin to add to the C. So that is cauldron. Okay, a very quick look at one down. Because there must be a definition here. It could be just swimming. But it could be swimming pool. I don't know. There aren't many. Piscina is all I'm thinking of that. If that was cycling, we'd get Iskinap. That is not... I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Let's have a look at two. Oh, this was the long one. Right. What have we got for this now? <sighs> the I and L are in the six-letter word. And the O and the R are in the middle of the seventh. It's not an anagram anymore because there's... A, oh, well, Kissimo's probably wrong, isn't it? Okay. Um, how do I remove that like that? Okay. Right. Forget the Kissimo. I think it is an anagram. I don't know where, where the cues go in it, to be honest. An expression of genius. So something maybe Einstein said. But what are the 117s? I've just noticed 24 has also got lots of one-letter words in it. The received view bears it out more than once, but it's refuted by seven. And again, 16151. I don't know what is happening here. Okay, what, what's happened in four down? N is at the end of the second word. Nothing so wordy, I, is the anagram letters, I believe. That's not enough. Right, I'm going to have to get into the bottom half of the grid, because I'm doing very little in the top half. Oh, 13 across, acts in an absurd way. In, I don't know. Don't know much. 21 across. Sugar, they write to Spooner. Spooner often indicates we, got, we have a Spoonerism, so ink pens, but you can't really Spoonerize that. Ink pins. They write. Authors. Uh, sugar, so... Is there a six-letter sugar ending in O's or lipase? Is that a sugar? No, it's an enzyme. Something ending in O-S-E. Six letters. Byros. Ribos is spoonerized byros. Wow. Okay, that is a sugar. 22 down. The unique individual, ooh, that's made single factory operative megabucks. Right, why I got excited there was because I immediately thought of a 3217 phrase beginning with O that could mean a unique individual, and that is one in a million, and that will fit with 19, which I think is where this continues as well. Um, so, single factory 
operative is one in a mill. The unique individual that's made one in megabucks is a bit of a million as well. I mean, I'm sure this is the right answer. I'm not 100% sure why it's the right answer. <clears throat> um, the unique individual. One in a million. That's made single factory operative. One in a mill. Why is megabucks ion? Not quite sure, but I think it's the right answer. Sorry. Can this man judge? I'm afraid not. Not quite. Okay. John. Can. There's two, there's two definitions there. A can is an American word for a toilet, as is a John. This man. Well, literally, I think this is by John Henderson. But that's irrelevant. The, the regular solver is not going to know that. It's just the name of a man. Then judge can be the letter J. And oh no is I'm afraid not. But it's not quite there. So it's been shortened. That is John. Right. 25 across. Stray lately. Stealing about. I mean, looks a bit like an anagram of stealing. But how could stray lately be the definition? That's a very odd one. I suppose if you roved around at midnight or something. No, I don't know. Um, I think it's more likely that stray is the definition. And then lately is somehow stealing, either incorporating, like pocketing or removing an abbreviation for about, which could be re or ca or c, I don't know. 23 says c24 across, right, that's part of this received, the received view bears it out more than once. But it's refuted by seven. I mean, I'm going to need a lot more help. Let's have a look at this. Just because I'm suspicious about John being here, it might be part of a, a longer name that's incorporated in the puzzle. So, 28 across. An omen, temporary accommodation, allowing water through walls. An omen, a presentiment. That's too long, even though tent is sort of hanging around in it, which could be temporary accommodation. I don't know. We've got an S at the end of the first word in 16 down. This is basic unless you count the biology. It's. It's the. Mm, 15 across with I as the second letter, perhaps. Restricted by diet. One barely feeds a little shop girl. Now, let's have a look at 17 down. Youth Centre in Luton. Ex oh, let's just see if you can see. You can see that clue. Sorry, you couldn't see the one I was reading out for one in a million, could you? Anyway. Um, Youth Centre in Luton extended new rises in antagonism. The centre in Luton is T. Teenager could be a youth. New rises in antagonism. Anger. Something to do with anger. Okay, if the centre in... Oh, the centre in Luton is the letter T. If you extend that i.e. you write the full word out for the letter T, you get T-E-E. -E. Then N for new rises in anger and you get teenager, which is youth. 18 down. Like some leaves, green say. There's not much information there. 
24. Oh, gosh, this is the received view. Bears it out more than once. Oh. It's an anagram of bears it more than once. Doesn't seem likely. I... <clears throat> I don't know what's going on here at all. Wow, this is very hard, Io. That's part of the same thing. Let's look at 20 down, uh, which reads, you can't see this, sorry, but 20 down reads 4-3 is the enumeration, long-term consumer projection. Long-term, some sort of age... Consumer is an eater or drinker. No, I don't know what's happening there either. And I'm really not getting much help for these long answers. Let's have another think about the Kenya's capital, where Kisimo might not be a town. Kenya's capital is, K is, I think that's quite good. I think fashionable city on Lake Victoria, Kislev. It's a city. I don't know. K Kigali? No, I don't know. I'm going back to eight across. Land private hospital, £20 after repositioning taps. Private could be PTE or GI. Um, I don't know many other abbreviations for private. Hospital could be H. £20 after repositioning. <clears throat> wow, I do not know. OK, let's go back to the area where I've got something and try these again. Stray lately, stealing about... Oh, and a, right, maybe an and lit, so that the whole clue is giving wordplay and definition. So that would mean, maybe, an anagram of lately, pocketing, as I said, for stealing, an abbreviation for about, which could be re or ca. And the whole alley cat, there you go. Wow, alley t is an anagram of lately, oh, sorry, alley cat. Um, now, R, ah, that puts a T in the seven letter word and I've just thought of go down in history, place among records and go down in history really does look like an anagram of nothing so wordy I. Um, and I'm put in mind of the lyric from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which you never know might turn out to be the theme. You go down in history like a dinosaur. Um, the received view. So it does begin with an I now. Now I don't know because the FT's software doesn't tell me whether 24 continues at 26 or at 23. Which would be useful to know in terms of putting this phrase together. The received view bears it out more than once. I came, I saw, I conquered, no. Except, I before E, except after C. Oh, that is, okay, what is beautiful there is the phrase received view. I before E, except after C. Let's look at this cue again, clue again. The received has I before E, uh, sorry, it has E before I, after C, and I before E, not after C. So it does bear out this saying more than once, which is beautiful. But it's refuted by seven. So clearly seven has E before I in it. And that's all that we're telling us. Now, what words have that? Foreign or leisure 
And this is in this phrase from 16. This is basic, unless you count the biology of Eruca vesicaria. It would be useful to know what Eruca vesicaria was, but I will not allow myself to look it up yet. It's the codeine. I mean, there's quite a lot of words that have E before I. Height, weight. I don't know. Let's have a look at this one, though, because we've got a lot of letters in the bottom right now. An omen. Portent. Temporary accommodation is tent. Portentous. So if something's an omen, then an omen is acting as a v adjective phrase. And that thing is portentous. And that is tent. Piercing porous, which is allowing water through walls. Now, like some leaves, green, say, sorry, you can't see that clue. Let me just shift there. Like some leaves, green, say. Well, I mean, apostate would fit. I'm just thinking of words that would fit. Probably ends in tate. State for say. Eco is green. Ecostate means without having a rib or maybe having a rib on the outside or something, because costa is Latin for rib, and that must be a term for like, for a, a particular biological description of leaves. Now, this long-term consumer projection. Bear out? <laughs> that phrase was in 24 across. Year out? Year out? They're all phrases. But they're not much to do with this. Beer jug? Projection. So something that sticks out. Consumer projection. That's really annoying because I'm never going to get any extra... This is the trouble with seven letter words with four unchecked letters. You're only going to get so much and quite a lot of things fit there and I don't really understand. Long term suggests it doesn't have very many different meanings, but projection does and consumer. Beer gut. It's kind of a pr long term. I think it is beer gut. And this is when. So, yes, if you're a long-term consumer of beer, you get this projection of your belly sticking out a lot. Right, that's dealt with those clues. I can put my face back in the corner. I can make myself a little bigger. There we go. Um, <clears throat> now, what we really have, the only thing we've contributed to from the bottom right, we've got I before E except after C. And it would be quite interesting if this was another phrase about letters, but it seems very un... Something about Q always needs a U. An expression of genius. No, I don't know. Let's have a look at 15 across. Restricted by diet, one barely feeds a little shop girl. It looks like it's going to end in net. Restricted by diet. Okay, well, if that was a T, that's the last letter of the second word of this. So it's not rocket science. Eruca, rucola is rocket. So there we go. And this is all to do with genius, isn't it? It's not rocket science. Now, what are the other phrases like that? It's not brain surgery. Um, yeah, the, bi the biology of Aruka Vesic area is rocket science in the sense of the plant. That's quite funny. Right, two down. So the expression of genius here, a little... No, we're meant to be using the letters of Cleek's Masquerade, apart from I... I don't know what to do with the cues. One six one one seven. 
Oh well, let's look at these words in the top right that we've got some some um, check letters for. I felt that you changed, but only a little. <laughs> ouch, that's lovely. I felt that is the definition, as in, ouch, I felt that. And then it's the phrase, you changed, but only a little of that phrase, because it's hidden in there. Right, 11 across, more than enthusiastic, spanking here, man's climax delayed. This is a very odd setup for a word. Onlooker doesn't fit. Um, over keen is more than enthusiastic. A spanking here, man's climax delayed. Ken? Over knee is where a spanking can happen. And N, man's climax, the last letter of N, has been delayed in, oh, sorry, in over knee you delay the N and it goes to the end of keen, wow. 13 across, antics is acts in, in an absurd way, and also a definition of acts that are done in an absurd way. Oh, I haven't seen this. Woman for whom, as before, temperature rises. I think this is Teresa. As air for before, T for temperature, and it's all rising. <clears throat> so now we've got John and Teresa. I don't think we're, the John is actually contributing to anything else. Just a signature, perhaps, in the corner. Now, what about this land, then? Ends in O something E. Land, private hospital. <clears throat> 20 pounds after repositioning taps. Score for 20 pounds, again, seems at least possible. Land. Private hospital. Oh, repositioning taps. Right, H score includes hot and cold. If you reposition those, you get C shore. Come ashore is to land. Home a score. Come ashore. I think it's right. And it's the phrase home a score for hospital and 20 pounds after repositioning the H and the C, swapping them round. Oh, a hospital can be a home, as in a nursing home, of course. Right. Okay. Now, I'm going to attack two down. From Cleek's Masquerade Balls. Cleek's Masquerade. Such an odd... S equals. Squared. It's um, E equals MC squared. Wow. Okay, and that is an anagram of Cleek's Masquerade once you take the I out. And there are two Qs in it. E equals M... C squared. Wow, midinet. That is somebody who serves in a shop in France, I think. Right, so restricted by diet. The word diet is restricting N, which is one, barely. If you strip one of its ends, you get N. And that's in the middle of this because it's feeding a little, which is a mite this time. Ooh, now... Do not know cities on Lake Victoria, it turns out. I think... K um... Is um, I think, Kisumu? You for fashionable. That might well be right, and there wouldn't be a lot of words that fit there, so you could forgive a compiler for coming out with that. And if this puzzle is... If this answer is wrong, I think it's going to be that. Now, swimming pool, cycling, some dancings included. Oh, it's just vowels in a seven-letter word, and I can't get these. So words that fit would include topical. Lido is a swimming pool. So if that was cycling, that could be dolly. 
or Olid, holiday. Holiday. A hay is an old dance, and that's including the swimming pool cycling. I don't understand where the definition is in this. I suppose swimming pool, cycling, some dancing's included. It's all a definition. So I think, there we go, that is the answer. Kisumu was right. That is very hard. But I can tell you that that is an incredibly impressive grid. If you've ever tried, as I told you at the beginning, I always used to be interested in making grids, and that has continued. And to fit into this puzzle, the phrase I before E except after C, go down in history, E equals MC squared, and it's not rocket science. Oh, science had I and E in it, didn't it? I thought it was meant to break the rule. But it's refuted by seven. Oh, because after C, you get I and then E in science. Wow, of course. I was also thinking that Einstein, who is presumably responsible for E equals MC squared, doesn't bear out the rule either, because his two EIs uh, don't come after C's. But this is, I mean, it's just incredible what John's put into this puzzle in a symmetrical grid with perfectly acceptable other words. It's brilliant stuff. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that to some extent. It was well worth doing and it's very clever. And uh, we'll do more crosswords, of course, on the channel at various times. Hope to see you soon. Bye for now.